What's your childhood mystery that you finally solved years later? That the brown part of bread doesn't contain the nutrients. It's just the more cooked outer layer. My brother lied to me to get me to eat crust when I was a kid. My dad used to occasionally burst out with this one line of a song, said Barnacle Bill the Sailor, only ever that line. When I was six or so I asked him why and he said it was an old drinking song that was absolutely filthy and I was too young to hear the rest of it. This continued once or twice a year until I was 18. I told him I was an adult now and he could tell me the rest of the song. I distinctly remember him looking up from the newspaper, sighing and folding it then going the truth is I can never remember the rest of the song. And then went right back to reading the newspaper. I have a memory from when I was six of an old man cracking jokes with the kids and spitting his dentures into his food. I thought it was hilarious and knew this man was named Frank. Casually mentioned it to my grandmother. Turns out I was remembering my great-grandfather and that day was my great-grandmother's funeral. The weird smell that I referred to as a stinky cheese smell were probably a symptom of seizures. I would happen maybe twice a year, it's not really like cheese, it's like a smell that isn't a smell. I dk how to even describe it. It was so minor parents disregarded it. I can remember it starting in second grade. I suddenly started having it a lot more as an adult when I hit 28 and got diagnosed two years later after symptoms became way more extreme. Makes so much sense now. Not the biggest mystery but. One day my friend was over in my house playing video games. My mom called us over to her room to help flip the mattress over. So we did. We then went to another friend's house. My mom calls that friend and says, there was two $20 bills on top of the dresser, did you get them? I said no, I asked my friend, he said no. Like five minutes later, my friend says if we want to go to the toy store because he has $40 in two $20 bills. I say yes and we go and he buys me a yo-yo or something. It took me years to finally realize that my friend stole the money. The entire time I lived in my childhood home, my mom hid my Christmas presents in her secret hiding place she made it sound mystical and mysterious a few months ago a while after I moved out. She finally told me what the secret hiding place actually was, the Christmas tree box in a cabinet in the garage she would replace the Christmas tree with my presents when she put the tree up. Growing up I always insisted I liked the mashed potatoes at my grandma's house better than the ones my mom made at home. My grandma once told me it's because she uses a special recipe. I found out last year that my mom hand mashes her potatoes. My grandma just gets the Betty Crocker boxed shit. Her special recipe I was gonna get what she dies is Betty fucking Crocker. When I was in elementary school, I always wondered what the teacher's staff room was like. It seemed so mysterious and I remember trying to get a peek anytime I walked by and the door would open. Later became a teacher and can fully confirm they're dull, often toxic spaces full of cranky teachers complaining about students. When I was younger, like four or five, my family had a pet turtle. One day the turtle went missing and my parents told me it climbed the wall in our backyard and went to the creek behind our house. I being a naive toddler child, did not question this logic. Fast forward to when I was 17 and driving with my mom in the car. We saw a tortoise crossing the street and I was suddenly thrown back to my memory of us having a pet turtle. I pulled over to save the tortoise and was all OMG mom turtles can't climb walls. What happened to our turtle? Came to find out it had burrowed a hole in our lawn and my dad didn't notice it until after he ran it over with a lawn mower crying face obviously it was easier to pick up the pieces and tell your kid it climbed the wall than admit you murdered it with a lawn mower. TLDR, parents lied to me about a pet going missing and I found out it was brutally murdered on accident by my father. Reverse of this, as a kid, my dad would call me from the other side of the house to bring him something to drink from the kitchen. He always drank from a straw and about first grade, I started getting annoyed at this so I started poking a tiny hole in his straw as my own little vengeance. I didn't come clean about this until I was like 22 years old. The look on his face was priceless. It's like he instantly snapped back to then and knew exactly what I was talking about and just said, son of A, you did, didn't you? He just thought we bought cheap straws. 
I visited my dad when I was six or seven years old at the place where he worked, or so I was told. I remember remarking at the time and people laughed at me because I said it looked just like a prison. The people laughing were the guards and I was indeed visiting my dad at Terminal Island Federal Correctional Institution where he was a federal inmate. Once when I was about seven or eight, my family was having a pool party and my 20-something aunt was sitting by the pool with a glass of clear liquid. I was hot and thirsty, so I reached for her drink and she said, don't drink that, it's pool water. I wondered why in the heck she'd have a glass of pool water, but left it alone. Years later, as my family's alcohol consumption habits became clearer to me, I realized that she was probably drinking vodka. Not sure if this is considered a mystery or not. My mother, who passed about in 2009, used to make a meatloaf every single year on Groundhog's Day. Every single year. Every single year she would tell us it was Groundhog and I always thought it just tasted like ground beef but I was kid. In 33 now. Last year, last year I said something to my brother about it and asked if he knew where mom got the ground hog. I wanted to do that for son. My brother had no idea what I was talking about. I told him about it and he started laughing, my wife started laughing, my own son, who didn't know why, started laughing. Mom got me good, mystery solved. It was just regular meat loaf. My mom used to call us in for dinner by yelling out the back door from the kitchen. I was in middle school before I realized the screen door was actually called a screen door. I live and grew up in the deep south. As a child from earliest memories until about eight, we would take a winter trip up to Stovermont to see the grandparents. I would have scary nights hearing ghosts wailing outside the windows. It was terrifying. GPs moved south and we stopped going. When I was in my 30s I took another trip up to Vermont. First night stay, I heard the ghosts. Turns out the winter winds up north are way different than the winds of southern nights. Suddenly my general fear of the dark disappeared as I realized fully what the source of the sound was. When I was a kid, my dad bought me one of those big candy cane things filled with jelly beans. I was so excited to eat the jelly beans, but I was told I had to wait for the next day. I asked for them later but apparently they disappeared into thin air. I couldn't find my candy cane anywhere. Lots of weird shit used to happen around our house, like borderline paranormal stuff, and dad said it was just that. No it wasn't. That fucker ate my fucking jelly beans. When I was really young, me and my siblings would play in my grandparents' yard. My grandfather would tell us to stay away from the skunk hole at the edge of the yard. We lived in South Texas so this wasn't something out of the ordinary and we just avoided it like any other animal home. Years later it dawned on me. It was actually the septic tank access. The reason my aunt punched her husband at the pool during a huge family vacation. It was because she found out that the long distance charges to the hotel room they shared had a ton of calls to a woman he was known to think was swell. I have huge gaps in my memories as a child. Like, weirdly inexplicable ones that always felt weird. Not just basic forgetting stuff. I've had a few instances of this happening as an adult as well. Welp, turns out I have a dissociative disorder and that can cause amnesia. One evening when camping, my brother caught a fish that we decided to keep alive in the cooler for some reason. Well, the next morning we ran out to see the fish and it had grown like 5 inches. We were so excited and didn't know how the fish grew that much overnight. Last year we brought it up and my dad said that he had got up that morning and seen the fish being taken by a raccoon and that he spent the next hour or so frantically fishing for another one. He said he caught the new fish, the first one he was able to catch, just a few minutes before we got up. I had never questioned that the fish growing that much as I grew up, but after hearing what really happened I did feel like we probably should have wondered about that more. When I was 10 my godfather gave me $20 as a Christmas gift, at the end of the dinner the money had disappeared. For years my parents blamed me for being irresponsible with my money. Years later we figured out, after she was caught stealing stuff from my aunt's house, that my cousin's fiancé at the time is a kleptomaniac. Turns out she was the one that stole the money. When I was four, I vividly remember getting into my mom's car and her telling me that our cat had died. She told me how she rushed him to the vet, and he was shedding fur, 
something was seriously wrong. Despite her best efforts he died. I never knew why he died and why it happened so suddenly, but I accepted that it happened. Fast forward about 15 years, I'm home from college for Christmas. On Christmas Eve, I'm out driving to the store with my dad and uncle. They are talking about the cat my parents got for Christmas one year, the cat mentioned above. My dad says yeah, that thing was too aggressive, so I took it to a farm and gave it away. Normally, when the family pet dies, the parents lie to the kid and say it went to a farm upstate somewhere to ease the burden. Not my parents. They told me the horrifying truth even though it wasn't, you know, true. My father used to take us camping and on hikes and bike rides. He taught us about safety in the woods and on the water and how to navigate using maps. So it wasn't all that strange when he said one day, I was maybe 10, we were doing a game where we'd be blindfolded and taken on a drive. The object of the game was to call out what direction we were turning by feel and then ultimately after driving about 30 minutes give a guess roughly where we were and which direction home was in. He was impressed how well we did and we took off the blindfolds and went for a hike. I never thought much about it. Years later I realized why we played the game. My dad was in criminal psychology, especially sex offenders. He was kidnap-proofing us but in a light-hearted way so there was no fear or trauma. I was watching Star Trek TNG with my dad when someone told Riker to wash his back. When I asked my father why someone would say that to another person, he said so you can smell someone coming up behind you. It wasn't until years later that I understood how easy it was to hear watches wash, and how committed my dad was to willfully deceiving his children for personal satisfaction. John Travolta was actually John Travolta which really made a lot more sense. When I was like 8 or so, I answered our house phone, and it was a man who asked to speak to my mom. Didn't ask for her by name, said could I speak to your mom, please I asked who it was and he said it's Santa Claus. I was so excited and ran to my mom, and I was telling all my friends for days that Santa Claus had called my house. This led me to believe in Santa for a few years longer than most kids normally do. I was heartbroken when I found out that Santa wasn't real. Years and years later I remembered to ask my mom who had called that day and said they were Santa Claus. It was our reverend and my mom was a deacon. He had known me for years so recognized my voice when I answered and knew what age I was. It had never occurred to me. Not mine, but my husband's, I hope he doesn't see this BC then my cover is blown. He said in middle school, there was a time that he'd get pulled out of class to shoot free throws in the gym. Only him. He didn't think this was strange, but didn't understand why he was the only one that got to do that. Turns out, his parents told his teachers he couldn't participate in sex edition haha. <laughs> My dad used to say he could stop the rain for a moment by snapping his fingers. He'd do it in the car when it was pouring. I was so mesmerized, told all my friends about it, well into late elementary school. I since realized he'd snap as we drove underneath an overpass. Woozy face. My dad is an ex-Catholic, and every night when he'd tuck me in until I left the house he'd say we love you. God bless you. Good night. And I was always wondering why, since he had stopped going to church long ago. Fast forward to me being 28 years old and watching an old Bruce Springsteen concert together, one of his favorite artists, and Bruce says, we love you. God bless you. Good night, at the end of his set. I turned my head towards my dad and asked if this is why he said that for years to me at night. He laughed and said, I have no original material. Who ate all the cherries in the cherry cake? I was blamed for this for years after someone picked out all of the cherries and ate them during a family Christmas party. Eight years later my little sister confessed to me that it had been her. <laughs>